to the Billy Graham rule, which if you don't know what that is, essentially says, as a man, I will not have time alone with a woman. Women, a lot of times, say that holds them back. Because this individual feels that he has so little self-control that he can't be around a female without saying something inappropriate or, or doing something, or doing something inappropriate. Or well, maybe there's something to this. No. Megachurch pastor Steve Lawson has an inappropriate relationship with a woman that is not his wife, but that's not the least of the firestorm. The much bigger explosion online happened when people started to question whether or not a rule Billy Graham instituted a long time ago is actually misogynistic and needs to be done away with. Well, are the people online right, as they never are, or is this an indication of something that's going on in the culture that we need to be very, very mindful of? We'll talk about that and more today on Indie Thinker. Welcome to the show. My name is Reed Uberman. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Today's show is sponsored by our friends over at Faith Comes by hearing. Did you know that 1.3 billion people on the planet have never heard the Word of God? 7 billion people do have a Bible, but 50% of them can't read it. Faith Comes by Hearing wants to solve that, not only by translating the Bible in as many languages as possible, but also by providing listening devices that read the Word of God in the hearer's native language. These devices can be carried from village to village and are solar powered so you don't have to worry about batteries and for those living in remote areas that can't get them. All Christians everywhere know how valuable the Word of God is and many of us can't imagine what our life would be like if we didn't have access to it, but many live in that reality each day. Faith comes by hearing is trying to change all of that. Now, you can help them in that goal. First, you can download their app and you can see for yourself all the different languages and the verbal audio Bibles that they have that speak the Bible in those languages. And you can even use it for other people that you may come into contact with that speak a different language. Uh, you can download that app by going to bible.is, but then you can also help them in their goal of trying to reach the world with audio devices that read the Word of God by going to faithcomesbyhearing.com. Do that today and see all the ways that you can help change the world by getting the Word of God into people's hands and ears. Now, for those of us who are familiar with sports whatsoever, you'll know that the rules of the game are actually pretty important. And as a result of it, there are people like Michael Jordan, who is the greatest basketball player of all time. Sorry, LeBron James fans, not sorry. But rules, when they are understood and then abided by, and then you operate within the confines of those rules can be very, very beneficial to people like Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky in hockey, and many other famous athletes. For those of us who drive on a regular basis, you also know that the rules of the road are actually pretty helpful. Those little lines on the road when they're actually obeyed can actually create a better driving experience. Very few of us, when we actually think about rules, would resist them as merely oppressive. We would liken them unto something that is helpful to us, like a train track for a train and making sure that it doesn't derail. But for some out there who are struggling with the spirit of the age, they are trapped in an ideology called moral relativism, which essentially says this, that there is no such thing as absolute truth. Now, a great example of this is the, is the trans ideology, where right now we have a group of people who are rejecting the absolute truth of their biology, and they are literally cutting off their nose to spite their face. They are cutting off pieces of their body to spite their biological sex. And as a result of that, for their trouble, they're going to get lifelong pain, they're going to get thinning bones, thinning hair, and likely a shorter lifespan. And most importantly, they will not get the euphoric result that they th are told that they're going to get by chopping on their body. Instead, they will just get a huge medical bill, but this is the world we live in now, where because we've removed moral standards from public life and we've said, you do you, we have a group of people who are abiding by their own moral standards and then throwing all caution to the wind. Now, this was most pronounced in a conversation that broke out online 
over the Billy Graham rule. Now I'll explain the Billy Graham rule and then tell you kind of the context. But the Billy Graham rule is the idea that a married man should never be alone with a woman under any circumstance. Now, Billy Graham often would take this rule to, to what some would consider an extreme. If he was on an elevator by himself and a woman jumped on the elevator at some different floor or something like that, he would get off the elevator, let that woman ride by herself, and then he would take another, another elevator up. So a lot of people took issue with this when it was recently addressed by Al Mohler in relation to the the firing of Steve Lawson, who was a megachurch pastor in Dallas. Now, he was fired from his church after decades of ministry because of an inappropriate relationship with a woman that wasn't his wife. And Al Mohler, in response to this, said, it's time for us to re-examine and reinstitute the Billy Graham rule because you will never find yourself doing something with a woman that you shouldn't do if you are never alone with that woman. You will not have sex with a woman, not your wife if you are never alone with a woman, not your wife. And of course, lots of people online, especially on X, had something to say about how misogynistic and antiquated this silly rule is. Now, later in the show, I'm gonna to get to those tweets and I'll try to respond in a more holistic manner, which is Kamala's favorite new word. And looking holistically, and looking holistically at the incentives to actually engage in planning in a holistic manner. But the real question at the end of the day is, why do we find a group of people militating against a truth that is obviously good for society and for individuals. Well, a local news station debated this topic not so long ago, and I thought that it was interesting to kind of engage. So we'll jump into that now. Well, here we are sitting at a table. We could have dinner together. Except if one of us were gone, I think the Billy Graham rule would fall into effect. <laughs> what am I talking about? Well, folks, welcome to Ozarks Tonight. I'm Brian Calfano, and this is Nick Reed and Amy Blancett. In the news, because recently the Republican candidate for governor in Mississippi refused to have a reporter shadow him during the day. She's a female, and he says he holds to the Billy Graham rule, which, if you don't know what that is, essentially says, as a man, I will not have time alone with a woman unless someone else, presumably another man, is present. So, well, there's some pushback. Some people think that's antiquated. Others say, no, this is appropriate if you're trying to uphold values and, and not give the impression of impropriety. But women, a lot of times, say that holds them back because then they can't get access. So one of that reporter's competitors, male competitors, gets that job, gets to shadow that candidate, gets this scoop, and does a better job, I guess, you know, because of that. So let's start with, with Amy, since we're talking about this something that's so got a kind of a gender yeah, thing. It is. it is so the difficult. Billy Graham rule. Yes. All right, so this may be just at first glance, another sign that women desperately need men to figure stuff out. If this is the assignment of a lifetime and this Republican candidate for governor of Mississippi is basically a make or break for your career, well then there's a really easy solution. If you, this guy doesn't want a female reporter traveling with him wherever he goes and being alone with him, well then all you have to do is get somebody to be there with you. Now I know this requires some small amount of effort, but again, if this is the groundbreaking opportunity of your career and you desperately need to follow this governor from Mississippi in order to kind of uh, climb that, that ladder uh, to become the successful woman that you need to be, then, then I think you could probably find a way to make sure that you have like a cameraman there or somebody there to, to kind of walk along with you so that, uh, so that you can make this possible. So just a helpful suggestion there from a man. That's called mansplaining. Yes, Ron, I know what mansplaining is. Well, you do now. I think we need to just, before we go any further, at least just say this. Um, who are we kidding? Uh, this is a mainstream journalist, and they have done everything that they possibly can to clown themselves publicly. Um, and as a result of that, why should we believe that uh, anything that this person would do would actually be substantive, meaningful, and useful? So not only is journalism in our modern day a total laughable concept, 
um, because of what they've done to themselves. But, but also this is Mississippi journalism. I mean, is, is something so vitally important to this woman's career going to take place on the campaign trail for this guy that she just cannot miss it? I mean, this dude probably needs a, a, a person, a witness alongside of him wherever this woman is just simply because he doesn't want to be an accessory to murder when people die of boredom based upon whatever she reports. So the real question at the end of the day is, does this Billy Graham rule really deny access, as they say, to women, and is it unfair to them based upon their sex? Or is it rather a good rule that will protect both men and women? Well, we'll see what else they have to say, and maybe we'll get an answer. So I, I understand. I mean, I understand, especially in today's day and age where, um, a lot of the topics that we're talking about, individuals feel uncomfortable in many different situations. I dealt with this at work where an individual had felt uncomfortable, um, didn't let any of us know, and it, and it's, it kind of spiraled. Um, and let's not forget the Me Too movement that, and that's that kind of overshadows correct. all of this. Yeah. And so um, it's the sometimes the what I mean to say and what I meant to say, but the intent that someone else took it, they become offended very quickly. And it's, uh, well, this person said behind closed doors this thing, and it was offensive, and now I, I'm a victim. Um, so I understand where a man would say, I feel uncomfortable uncomfortable Forget being alone it. with a female right. just to protect myself but the same for a female I, I feel uncomfortable that I could say something that some so it's kind of across the board so I understand it but more the idea of being so demeaning to a female and like you had mentioned that she doesn't get the job or that she doesn't get the interview because this individual feels that he has so little self-control that he can't be around a female without saying something inappropriate or, or doing, something, or doing inappropriate. something inappropriate. So like I understand where they're coming from, but man, to think that we're in a culture where you can't keep your hands to yourself when the door is closed, so you gotta create a rule about it, it is demeaning. Well, not only is it not demeaning, but also Amy doesn't actually understand what's going on here or why this rule may be good because it actually doesn't have anything to do with the fact that men are such dogs and so toxic that whenever they get alone with a woman, they have to say something sexual. They have to grab them by the P word. That's just the way men are. No, what if actually that's not true and this rule actually is a wise principle for protecting not only women, but also men from false accusations, from a movement, I don't know, maybe the Me Too movement, which said, believe all women. Like, believe all women no matter what? Catch me outside, how about that? Have you met all women? Not all women should be believed. Suffice to say, feminists have created a world, and they did have some help, where now, men have to be on their guard against false accusations. Maybe you remember a while back that Trevor Bauer was accused of sexually, violently sexually assaulting a woman. And he had to sue that woman to keep her from coming after his tens of thousands of dollars or whatever she was trying to sue him for. Trevor Bauer, of course, is a Major League Baseball player. And uh, this woman went to the great lengths of getting somebody to beat the living daylights out of her just so that she could try to extort this guy because he had one night alone with this woman. Now, this is another way in which the feminists have created a world that is just intolerable for all of us. So they've said, free love, pursue sexual pleasure. Women don't have to have any scruples. They can be just like men and have sex with whoever, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then if the natural repercussion of those engagements take place and you get pregnant, well, then of course we have an answer for that as well. And so that kind of unlimited hedonic sexual pleasure has created a society where it is no longer safe for a man necessarily to be with a woman alone because he does not know the intentions of that woman. Let's just say that the vast majority of the time that that's not an issue, which I understand it isn't, but what is an issue is the erasing of moral lines that keep us all protected. So here they're responding to the fact that this just has to do with sex rather than it has to do with misrepresenting what somebody said or maybe somebody bearing false witness and having another witness there might actually be a very good and responsible thing for everybody that's involved but in a society that's constantly erasing boundaries like the sexual mores that we find let's say in scripture when we have a society hell bent on going to hell um, well then we don't value these rules as much but there is one other anchor who's going to try to help amy and this other individual see the light let's see what he has to say 
Nick. Billy Graham was a humble individual who understood that all human beings, no matter how hard you desperately try to you know, be godly, are susceptible to falling. He understood that. And so he adopted the belief system that why put myself in a position as unlikely as I believe it ever would be if it isn't absolutely necessary. And, and so that's, that's what that rule is, and that seemingly was the reason that uh, that um, candidate had given. At the same time, his campaign talked a little bit about, well, you know, the appearance of it, and you never know. We I think a lot of people after the Kavanaugh hearings that guilty until proven innocent, sort of sometimes in politically In a political in situation, that's a lot different than if you right. do an HR mm -hmm. at a workplace where right. they're doing an investigation. Um, and, and I would say, and, and this wasn't a job necessarily, it wasn't that somebody was denied a job, she just wanted to trail them, and sometimes politicians will allow, candidates will let um, reporters follow them, kind of get behind the scenes. But and it is just, a scoop, and it did it, go it to is, a guy because of that. But, and I would also support if it were the other way around, and if you had a female running for governor who said, I'll do it, you're a guy, but there's got to be a woman here as well, so that there's, I, I would understand that. I would completely understand it. So I don't think that it's a scenario where only women can be on the receiving, receiving end of that. It can easily be a guy, uh, you know, that finds himself in that situation. Yeah, so imagine that. An individual might think to himself, well, boy, they will go after Brett Kavanaugh and he will be guilty until proven innocent. And they will make up all of these charges of sexual assault and rape against him and Clarence Thomas. And the left will make a habit of this to think that there's a whole political side of the aisle that would falsely accuse somebody of something. Well, maybe that's what the Billy Graham rule has to do with more than anything else, that you will never have to worry about any of those false accusations coming as long as you make sure to avoid the appearance of evil, which by the way, is a Bible verse. And that's what Billy was trying to do. So let me ask a question that I think can sum all of this up for all of us. Do you have car insurance? And do you have car insurance because you're such a horrible driver that you can't trust yourself behind the wheel? Or is it even that there are others around you, admittedly, way more moronic than you that, that don't drive as good as you? Or do you have car insurance simply because you think you're a good driver and other people simply may be good drivers, but accidents do happen and you need to have that insurance policy just in case? So here's what I would say. The Billy Graham rule is nothing but an insurance policy to make sure that you're protecting yourself in case something unexpected would happen. Now, a lot of people will never be in the position of Billy Graham, so they will never know what it would be like to have that kind of potentiality. But if you are a celebrity, if you're in the spotlight, this is something that is especially important. Now, also, I do have to say the naivete of suggesting that affairs don't happen or that by engaging in the appearance of evil, you do open up a, a possibility for these things to take place more than you would otherwise. Um, I think to deny that is totally, is totally naive is the best way that I could think to say it. So yes, I think you should be on guard because people fundamentally misunderstand human nature now more and more and more because they continue to erase moral standards. But also I think you should be on your guard because there's human nature in, an, in that other person that you may not know, and it's just wise to take that into consideration. But of course, the people on social media wanting to fight against Christianity because maybe they got butt hurt one time in church will never probably see that light. But I can read you their tweets about the Billy Graham rule. The Billy Graham rule was never intended to protect women. It was designed to protect Billy Graham. Yeah, and? And then we've got this. A reminder that the Billy Graham rule for Billy meant be financially transparent, don't take love offerings, avoid criticizing other churches and pastors, don't exaggerate, avoid situations that would even appear ethically compromised. The focus was never women. Well, it wasn't about women, correct, but it was about ethically compromising positions between opposite sexes, and women still do exist, by the way. Uh, how about this one? If you think the Billy Graham rule is prudent because you're helpless against your base sexual instincts, then you are exactly the same as transsexuals who believe the same about themselves. Well, I hate to break it to this woman, but the same exact prescription for the transsexual is what we would say to the person who supposedly can't keep their hands to themselves, which is fight your baser instincts, cling to Christ, read the word of God, and do whatever is necessary to fight against the human nature that resides in each and every one of us. But all of these tweets have this in common, not that they're just dumb, but they are ide ideologically possessed. They cannot praise this rule or even its intent. Here's why. 
because of moral relativism. Not only has it made us stupider, so that we cannot discern higher good from lesser good, or even what evil is, but now we just assume if we don't like something, it must be bad, and it needs to be destroyed. That kind of immature, impetuous behavior is far too common today among adults. And it all comes back to the idea that there is no absolute truth that we're accountable to. You can see this in mantras that are far too common today and in the spirit of the age, sayings like this, to each his own, you do you, you have your truth, I have my truth. All faiths lead to God and love is love. All of this points to the idea that there isn't one truth that all men must live by. And I'd argue it's nothing more than a desire to avoid consequences. You know, the consequences that come with rejecting God and rejecting truth, or that maybe thinking could help us really avoid. It's way easier to lean into your feelings and to yell at anyone who disagrees with you. But there's a stiff price to pay for rejecting truth, only because you want to hang on to your autonomy from God. And isn't that what this is about at the end of the day? Everyone instinctually knows that there are rules to life. We all have to follow them. And the only reason we'd reject that is simply because we are too lazy or in love with laziness, or we are so in love with temporary pleasure that we don't care if we have to reject truth to hang on to it. G.K. Chesterton said this, Christianity has not been weighed and found untrue, but rather been found hard and then left untried. Now, I argue with Chesterton here. Moral relativism is nothing less than a refusal to accept the price tag involved in Christianity. Yes, it will cost you your life, but it is the only way to really gain it. But over and over again, we see there's a price tag for doing the opposite anyway. If you want to go around acting morally bankrupt and give in to philosophies like feminism and Marxism, now I'm repeating myself, but if you want to live by those rules, you'll see that there's a price tag for that too. Whether it's open borders leading to women being raped and killed by illegal immigrants, or the free love movement creating the need for the Me Too movement because of everyone screwing everything in sight, we see that there's a price to pay for ideas. Bob Dylan said it this way, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you're gonna have to serve somebody. Well, it may be the devil, it may be the Lord, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. Once you realize that the rejection of absolute truth created by an absolute God only leaves you living in quicksand, it may be time to realize that moral equivalency and moral relativism will in no way create a livable culture. It's created a world where telling the truth creates anxiety rather than joy. Now you think about that the next time you get into a situation where you have to say something that's controversial, but true. Now, who am I to judge? Well, let me tell you that because I know that's the question that will come. I am nobody, but God and his word, it is everything. Until our culture quits militating against it, we will all be lost in a sea of irrelevance living in our own individual truths. And all that will leave us with is a ship that is going to capsize because it will eventually be pushed over by whatever next wave comes. With no anchor, we have nothing to tether ourselves to and we will not be nothing but adrift at sea. But there is hope in a lifestyle predicated upon God's holy and objectively true word. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and go with God.